About a month ago, we were introduced to some brand spanking new Pokemon. Not only were we introduced to three more common Pokemon, but the new box art legendaries too. And of course on this channel, we obviously have our priorities straight, so let's completely throw these legendaries out the window and focus on these three instead. I wanted to jump onto the evolution predicting bandwagon and try to create evolutions for Palmy, Smolov, and Lechonk. Let's see if I make a design that pleases the Lechonk cult or not. Seem pretty cavalier. Little by little, you take control. Hello, my friends. I'm Missy Dupot, but you can call me Missy if you'd like. As previously mentioned, I wanted to try and predict what Pommy, Smolov, and Lechonk might evolve into, if they evolve at all. Will Lechonk be bipedal? Will Pommy be the first Pikachu clone to evolve? There are so many unanswered questions that I'm gonna try to answer today. I do want to give a disclaimer that these are really half what I want these Pokemon to evolve into, and half of what I think will actually happen. A nice mix of predictions and hopes and wishes that'll probably never be fulfilled. I wanted to start this video off with my predictions for Smoliv. I posted a community post asking what direction you guys thought these hypothetical evolutions might go, and most of you agreed with me on the fact that this anxious little olive was gonna grow up to be... the new grass waifu Pokemon. Yay! As much as I don't like that Pokemon trope, I do think it's the direction that Pokemon will go with Smolov's evolutions. Something like Serena, Lilligant, or maybe Rosalia. What if this feminine grass type wasn't just, you know, something pretty to look at, but a kick-butt warrior too, taking inspiration from ancient Greek warriors. Hoplites were spear and shield-wielding warriors from ancient Greece, and I think that could work as a grass-slash-fighting type final evolution. But some of you may be asking what do ancient Greek warriors have to do with Spain. Well, someone once said in a video I watched that many of the Pokemon in Unova aren't New York or even US based, and this is because it was the first Pokemon region to take inspiration not from Japan. Similarly, I think that even though Greece and Spain are a whole country apart, they're both part of the Mediterranean region. I don't think it's unbelievable for the creators of Pokemon to take inspiration for Gen 9's Pokemon from the surrounding areas, so I think I'm gonna stick with this kick butt but still feminine warrior design. Now I'm predicting that, like Zarina's evolution line, small will have three stages when it's done evolving. So let's start with the middle evolution before working on that final warrior form. When making a three-stage Fakemon, I like creating the middle evolution last so I can really try connecting the first and last stage. Make it flow a little more naturally. With all of this in mind, I got to work and drew up a paper sketch. After I had a basic sketch, I jumped over to my computer and fixed some proportion issues. I created a body made of olives and tried using leaves to resemble some type of hair. Next, I tried to give this hypothetical middle evolution a face that looked like Smolov's, but leaned a little bit more on the cliche feminine side, eyelashes on the eyes kind of thing, which I think is a little bit of an odd trope because men have eyelashes too. But back on topic, it was time to move on to the hands, which took a bit of work and end up looking pretty different by the end. I tried to make these hands resemble leaves, with a pose that was protecting a Smolov, as if this Pokemon is learning to protect others even though it's still nervous itself. It's getting braver. I wanted to take inspiration from ancient Greek clothing, so that the evolution from all Olive to Hoplite flows a little better, but it's hard to incorporate clothing into Pokemon designs. I tried adding something like this piece of cloth that I saw in multiple Google images. I've been trying for like the last 15 minutes to figure out what this thing is called, so I think I'm just gonna have to accept defeat and realize I'm not gonna find it. We'll just have to call it the fabric thing, I guess. <laughs> the hardest part about the fabric thing was figuring out how to make it drape across the body without just looking like clothes. I mess with it all throughout the sketch and even during the line art, so just ignore it for the time being. Now here I am trying to work all the branches into the design. I try to have one tied across the chest, connecting the fabric thingy. I end up not liking this though and try a few different approaches before scrapping the idea completely. I decided to do another sketch layer now that I had the basics hashed out. In this final sketch, I changed the hands, trying to make them look less stiff, and tried changing the pose too. Eventually, I settled on a bit of a compromise, positioning the new hands in the old pose. After that, I used the olive branch idea from earlier and added a couple to the hair just to give it a little flair. Bars? What the heck, excuse me? Added to the hair, give it a little flair. Could have been a pair, it's just not fair. Added to the hair to give it a little flair, and I. <laughs> okay, okay, this is so dumb. I'm gonna. Hair to give it a little flair. We could have been a pair, but it's just not fair. Bars? What the heck? Excuse me. Added to the hair, give it a little flair. 
could have been a pear, but it's just not fair. So let's give it a little flair. <laughs> That was so dumb. Anyway, I fixed the fabric thing and drew up a little small of too to finish up the sketch. Congratulations, your small of has evolved. It's maintained the normal grass typing and the early bird ability. This Pokemon does its best to maintain peace amongst its friends. Often, it will step into fights, prompting each side to apologize, as if it's helping those around it extend an olive branch. This middle evolution was a little bit of a challenge, but a lot of fun to design. I don't have any name ideas, so per usual, if you have any ideas, I would love to see them down below in the comment section. With that, let's see what Smala's final evolution could hypothetically look like. As previously mentioned, I really wanted this final evolution to go in an ancient warrior direction, but still keep that feminine grass type trope that Pokemon loves so much. I started thinking and doing research about ancient female warriors in particular, but I wasn't really coming up with anything because women didn't really take part in spear to spear conflict back in 700 BC. But that's when it hit me. Athena. For those of you who may not know, Athena is the Greek goddess of warfare and wisdom. She's a tactical fighter who also happens to be one of the most famous Greek warriors of all time. And the cherry on top is that according to Greek mythology, Athena created olive trees. A competition arose between Poseidon and Athena when both wanted to protect the city of Athens. To settle this dispute, the king of Athens suggested they both present a gift, and whichever gift was favored by the people would become the protector. Poseidon offered a spring of salty water, showing off his ocean-controlling abilities. Athena created an olive tree, a gift that represented peace. As you may be able to guess, Athena won and Athens was named after her. So I think that an olive-based Athena-inspired Pokemon would be the perfect final evolution for Smoliv. And after looking back at the comments on the community post I mentioned earlier, I realized that Honey Boy had this same idea. Sorry if I said your name wrong. And that sealed the deal. It was time to get to designing. Just like with the middle evolution, I started with the paper sketch first, but this sketch was a little more fleshed out and finished. I end up not changing this design very much from the sketch, but I'll fill you guys in on the details. I drew up another olive body, this time one with longer legs. I gave it a bit of a hairstyle made out of that leaf stem stuff, just like Smoliv in the middle evolution have. The hair is tied up into a ponytail out of the way for battle. Then I moved on to making a cloak out of olive branch leaves. Olive tree leaves are a bit slender when compared to other types of leaves, and I wanted to incorporate this uniqueness into the design somehow. So I gave this evolution a leaf cloak. Next I gave it some leaf hands like the middle evolution had, but I wanted these hands in particular to look more like olive branch leaves. One of these leaf hands is wrapped around a spear. I wanted to include a spear in this design because of Athena's use of her spear and the olive origins story, and to reference the fact that hoplites typically use spears in battle. I imagine that the sharp end of the spear is actually made up of a thorn. Russian olive trees spout long, thin thorns on their branches, which fend off animals from sprouting olives. The perfect natural weapon to be incorporated into this design. Then I added some olive branches wrapped around this Pokemon's body. I wanted them to look a bit like natural, but still fancy jewelry. After finally sketching something I was satisfied with, I moved back up to the head and worked on that ponytail some more. The Pokemon Scarlet and Violet website states that Smolov will shoot out olive oil when startled, and I'm guessing that's out of the top of its head here. I wanted to take this a step further and give my final evolution a constant stream of olive oil. Maybe this oil is hot, and this Pokemon whips its head around in battle to attack foes with its hair. Most of the minor changes I made were during the line art stage, just trying to make it look less clunky and more symmetrical in design. I also had to make a very important decision during this line art stage. After extensive research, I came to the realization that most of the grass type feminine Pokemon don't have mouths. Do mouths like take away from the appeal or something? Why are they not included? Are mouths ugly? Am I just learning this? Whatever the case, I had originally planned not to include a mouth in this design either, but the face just looked empty without one. I'm realizing now I could have fixed this by moving the eyes or making them bigger, but at the time I didn't think of either of these solutions. Instead, I tried out a couple of different mouths and jokingly drew up these kissy lips. It was only a funny placeholder at the time, but they started to grow on me. So I asked you guys over on Instagram what you thought. No mouth or kissy lips. And the majority of you guys thought that kissy lips were the way to go. So that settled that. After the great kissy lip debate, it was coloring time. I tried out a lot of different color combinations, trying different green greens, purples, reds, and browns. I eventually settled on this green and this red purple, feeling that using different colored olives would spice up the design a bit. Well, 
would you look at that? Smoliv has reached its final evolution, Toliv. Or maybe Athelev? I'm workshopping the name still. <laughs> Either way, this Pokemon is a grass fighting type and has the ability Inner Focus, an ability that prevents the user from flinching. This Pokemon spends its time looking over the local Pokemon. It tries to settle any fights that break out and dedicates itself to protecting smaller Pokemon from larger foes and fighting off bullies. I had a lot of fun creating the rest of Smolov's evolution line, and learning about Athena and the supposed origins of Olives. Would you have taken a different approach to designing Smolov's evolutions? Feel free to let me know down below in the comments. But don't go anywhere yet, because it's time to move on from Smolov's hypothetical evolutions to Palmy's. It seems that Palmy is the Pika clone of Generation 9. Ahem, <clears throat> Ninia. And because of this, many think it won't be evolving. The only Pika clone in the past that has evolved is Meryl. I don't even know if those count as Pika clones or not. When asking my community what they thought of Palmy evolving, many of them predicted it won't, but are open to the idea. I think an evolution for this cute chubster would benefit it a lot. I don't think I've ever really used a Pika clone on my team during any playthrough of any Pokemon game. And if I have, it was only on my team as a placeholder. I really enjoy Pokemon that evolve because it feels like they're growing up alongside you during your journey. But these Pika clones, they're one stage Pokemon, many of which are very cute, don't get me wrong, but they just don't appeal to me. I'd rather replace them with a cooler, evolving, or even just plain stronger team member. So long story short, I hope that Palmy does evolve. It just makes more sense to me that Pika clones would evolve anyway, because Pikachu evolves. But I don't know, I don't speak for the whole fan base. maybe some people prefer these single stage electric rodents. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Speaking of which, someone in the comments said they predict Palmy to evolve into an electric fire type, and I totally agree with that. From the moment I saw this little guy, it gave me fire vibes. Maybe it's the little hair tuft here, or just the darker orange color. If Pommy's evolution did embrace this fire typing, it would be the first electric type that's not an alternate form. But how could I, and hypothetically Game Freak, connect an electric chinchilla mouse to fire? Maybe something about electricity sparks leading to fire? I knew that Pug Waffles and I couldn't be the only ones who thought that Pommy would grow up to be a fire spitting lightning mouse. Master. So I looked into what others were thinking design-wise. I turned to the internet and ended up on Google. I was scrolling and scrolling and then there it was the subscribe button, and it needed to be clicked by the 90% of you who aren't subscribed. All it needed was to be turned from red to gray, and all of the hopes and dreams of- Sorry about that, but sometimes the truth has to be shared. Now where was I? Oh right. I was scrolling and scrolling and then there it was. It was everything I'd been hoping for this hypothetical evolution. The typing, the proportions, the colors, the inspiration, everything about it. So really, there's no point in me trying to make a Palmy evolution, because somebody has already made Goromi, and it's perfect. I'm most likely going to butcher this person's name if I try to say it, but you can find their Twitter link down below in the description and their handle is on screen. Please go show this art some love and check out their account. It is so good. Goromi takes inspiration from the scrapped Raichu evolution, Gorochu. I love how this design mixed Gorochu and Palmy flawlessly, and even included the fire typing. Now that fur tuft I was talking about earlier is literally fire. They even included the patterns that Gorochu was speculated to have, and the giant ears emulate its spikes. I think this is the perfect combination of cute and cool, and I really hope this is the direction that Pokemon goes with. I really feel like Palmy is the perfect chance to call back to the scrapped Pikachu final evolution. Now, I hope Goromi doesn't mind, but it's time for us to move on and take a look at Lechonk's evolution prediction. The Scarlet the and Violet website states that Lechonk is a gourmand with an excellent nose, and that it has a body of mostly muscle. But what if its evolution took more inspiration from a gluttonous chef? An evolution from a snack connoisseur who travels across the land for perfect tasting berries, to a chef who's mastered the recipes, and really enjoys eating them. Multiple people who answered my community posts seem to come to an agreement that Lechonk will most likely be evolving into a normal ground type, and I definitely agree with this. So maybe this chef digs up its ingredients from the ground, calling back to Lechonk's trouble pig inspiration. I was already starting to envision something in my head, so I grabbed some paper and drew up a sketch. I gave this hog a big rounded belly, which is also known as a pot belly. Coincidentally, that's a type of pig too. The Vietnamese pot-bellied pig. Look at this little cutie! After the belly, I moved onto the legs, giving this evolution rock or maybe dried mud-covered hooves. I wanted to keep Lechonk's facial mud patterns for the evolution, but add them in more places. I did this by adding an apron-shaped mud pattern on the stomach, referencing the waist aprons that some chefs 
glassware. Like I said earlier, I wanted to take inspiration from the truffle pig, just like Lechonk does, so I gave this Pokemon a shovel tail, perfect for digging up yummy tasting roots and mushrooms. After working on this guy's face a lot, I drew boar tusks made of stone. I imagine it uses these tusks to scrape off the bark of trees or charge at its enemies. I drew in the eyes and some eyebrows next, and drew in a mustache-like mud pattern under the nose. When I googled chef stock image, I got a lot of images of chefs with mustaches, so I thought it would be fun to reference that in its design. To further this chef inspiration, I included a chef's hat, though I'm not exactly sure where it got its hat. Maybe it can like double as a mushroom to reference truffles maybe? I don't know, but if Alakazam gets to hold two spoons, Lechonk's evolution gets a hat. Not only does it get a hat, but an apple too. I included this apple to reference the Lechon dish, the roasted pig with an apple stuffed in its mouth. Lechonk's name seems to be making reference to this Filipino dish, and I wanted the second evolution to continue this trend in some way. Here's the hoping that Lechonk's evolution isn't just a fried pig. After drawing something that at least resembled an apple, I moved on to the hooves, giving them mud patterns that go through quite a few changes throughout this design process. Then it was line art time. I made a few little changes during this stage, like the mud patterns, adding a pattern to the shovel tail, and making the eyes a little bit more triangle shaped. I felt like this made the face look less cutesy and more like a final evolution. While I was messing with the face, I thought about giving him a little mouth too, but I didn't end up going in that direction. <gasps> Your Pokemon is evolving! Congratulations, your Lechonk evolved into Bormond, a name made up of the words Boar and Gourmand. It's now a normal ground type, but maintains the aroma veil slash gluttony ability. This Pokemon uses its nose to find the perfect ingredients. It then digs those ingredients up, making delicious meals for itself and those around it. The only downside is that Bormond never washes its hands. I, uh, I guess the no hand washing can add a little flavor? Maybe? And with that, it's time for this video to come to a close. I had a lot of fun designing these three, and I feel like I have a new appreciation for Palmy, Lechonk, and Smolup now. Let me know what you guys think of these predictions down below in the comment section. Do you think they're drastically wrong? Let me know! And hey, if you enjoyed these designs, feel free to let me and others know by giving the video a like. And while you're down there, feel free to click that subscribe button. When I was writing this script, we were trying to reach a goal of 600 subscribers, and we have blown that out of the water, so thank you all so much. Let's see if we can get to 650 now. Make Make sure you go tell this Goromi artist how cool this design was over on their Twitter and down below in the comment section. This video was made and scripted and mostly edited before the August Pokemon Presents, and right now it is August 2nd. It's the day before the announcement. I don't know what's on that trailer yet, so if they announce the evolutions for this Pokemon and I was dead wrong, let me know down below in the comments. Let's hope I get this video out before then. I gotta try to get it out today. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and these predictions. This is Misty Dupop, signing off. Until next time, my friends.